Hey guys, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Today we're going to look at building battery cables. Um, it's something that I never really covered in any of my videos because I had my pal Eddie do them up for me and he does a really good job. So I kind of found him in the early stages. He's doing a, a solar install for a, a guy here putting in some battle borns. So he's putting in some really heavy cables because it's going to draw a lot of energy out of, well, they, they do, they can put out a lot of energy, but the guy also has a huge inverter. So he's using uh, four aught cables here, and um, he does a really good job. So he's been kind enough to let me look over his shoulder as he makes up the cable and does the connection and everything. So maybe you guys will learn a bit about how that's done and why, you know, a good connection is one of the most important things for your battery. Never mind you pay all that money for, uh, say, a lithium or even some expensive lead acids. And then you see guys, they put tiny little cables on and really poor, poor crimps. So... We're gonna look at him build up those battery cables and maybe we can learn a thing or two. Okay, so here's Eddie. You probably remember him from a couple videos ago where we showed his solar system. He runs an outfit called Mobile Homes Mobile 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 Homestead. Mobile Homestead. Yeah. <laughs> Say it like a Canadian mobile. Yeah. Mobile Homestead Solar Services. So he's gonna show us how he makes up the cables and you'll see how uh, hard it is to cut a four aught cable there. You put a grunt into it. Yeah, put a grunt into it. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> That's a thick cable. So he's done, what, thousands of these now? Oh, without a doubt. So this is like uh, looking at a pro do it. But at least you'll be able to get an idea how he does it. I started doing these working with uh, boat wiring and stuff back when I was younger. Yeah. If you don't get it right in a marine application, you're not going to so get it right. So you're putting on that no no ox no locks no locks. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's an antioxidant, but it's also um, causes conductivity. Yeah. So that way, later on, you don't get that little white um, film on there that, um, that's going to actually cause it to where it doesn't. Um, you know, have a, a better flow. You yeah. try to everything oxidizes, builds high resistance, then they yep. run hot, and then yep. you got problems. Well, and you're trying to kill any resistance in that line that you can. Yeah. And then after I do that, I'll take and put it in the. I have a hammer cripper, but um, I haven't been able to find a good one for a while. The place I used to get them from doesn't have any more, but this is a hydraulic crimper a, a nice man gave to me. Oh, so yeah. Check that thing out. And if you put enough grunt into it, it really does a good job. There you go, grunting again. There you go. And that's what it looks like right there. Oh, beautiful. And see what it does is the head of the wire gets in here, and then when you crimp it here, it causes a knot up here, and then it yep. can't slide out. Oh, and yeah. I'd hook it to your pickup and, and haul something with it. I guarantee yeah. it won't come apart. So you used to use the hammer crimper and it would just kind of put an indent in one. Well, the hammer crimper is good too, but yeah. it does it a little different. What it does is it'll, it'll take this side when it's rounded and it'll wedge it this way. And then you have another one that wedges it in here. Yeah. So it does kind the same. Kind of more like a V. Yeah. And then, and then it's got the notch in there and it does exactly yeah, the same thing. If a it's a if it's cheaper done. way to go because the hammer crimpers aren't too expensive. Yeah, it's hard to find any good ones anymore. They're all junk. Are they? Yeah, I've been looking for a handful of them and I can't I find I remember them that one video you had where you were whacking on it on a, a railway tie or something. And then if you got the right ting, you knew you'd bottomed out. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good crimp. Well, and then after I get done doing that, we'll put the other side on. And then we'll put the heat shrink on. Okay. I'm go over here. These thick cables can be hard if you've never done them before. And there's a lot of fine wires in there. Yeah. And if you don't get them right, see, you could do that. See how I'm doing that? The wires are all yeah. coming out. Yeah. So it, you have to make sure that anything that's that's been cut as you're doing the sheath on that, making sure that that's all clean. And then when you put the Nolox on there, you got to, same thing, you've got to make sure that all them wires stay put because you won't get them inside of that, yeah. that connector. So what kind of wire is this you're using on this guy? It's this right here is, let's see if this get on it. This is a welding wire, welding cable, which is also battery cable. It's not a marine rated 
cable. Yeah. And if it was to be outside of the RV, I would recommend the marine yeah. uh, style cable because it is better, but it is about twice as expensive. Tough flex, yeah, heavy the, duty welding cable. It runs about oh, almost eight foot. Eight dollars a foot for the Sporot. Yeah. But so we're not saying everybody would need four rot for no. their systems. This is kind no. of a. This guy's got six um, battleborns in there, so that's that's going to be drawn. Most of most people are putting maybe one, two, maybe three batteries like mine, and and a, maybe a two thousand watt inverter. They yep. could probably get away with a two watt. Yeah, he has a thirty eight hundred watt inverter, yeah. and he's going to be running uh, a good majority of his, of of the stuff he has on his. Um, inverter um, and you know if, if you have too small a wiring you're going to run into the resistance problem and resistance is one of your worst things that you could ever have with, yeah you're going to lose power so things, it, and the inverter is going to sag and not run right yep yeah. it's a lot better to do it now than have to tear it all out and do it all over yeah. again later so that's the reason for what little bit of a difference is in, in the 2 watt and the 4 watt. yeah this makes sense for this application yeah, it's always a shame when people uh, pay a lot for their inverters and batteries and then just kind of try to save a little money on the wiring, and the wiring is one of the most important things. Yep, it is. For, exactly. a, good, for a good running system and a long-lasting system. Sooner or later, you're going to have to replace your inverter. Sooner or later, you're going to have to replace your charge controllers um, and batteries. But yeah. when it comes down to your um, wiring, it, if it's done right and, and it's taken care of, you shouldn't have to replace it. that <laughs> yeah so can you change those those uh, dies in there and get different sizes yeah, yeah. yes you yeah. can just let me walk over I'll grab it real quick and bring it to you nice guy by the name of Mike gave this to me yeah, thanks and Mike you can wow, look at that. you can switch it and see this is this is a metric which you know better than I yep. do Ray but um, I've, I've started my conversions on which ones I can use to make it for the different kinds and sizes. Yeah. Now when I get down into the uh, below number four, I've got another one um, that I picked up at, uh, I actually picked it up at Harbor Freight and it, my dad got it for Christmas and it works great. Nice. Hey, one tip when you're putting on these connectors is to think about how you're going to orientate it with the batteries so you can see how he's got one going one way and one going the other. That's because it's going to be a, a jumper type cable, but I'll let him explain a little tip he does before he starts putting that on so he remembers. Well, what I do is uh, I'll take the cable and I put it in the place where I'm going to um, have it installed. Um, I, I make my mark to what you don't want to cut it the length of from eye hole to eye hole. I go from where it's going to fit in the fitting on each side and once I figure out what the length is I'll align it to where I want the connector to be. Like right here this is on the fuse side yeah. and I have a plus. Now it's kind of ratty looking. Yeah, it's right spot. on there. And um, I figure okay this is the orientation I want my fuse and then when you go to the battery bank it's a little different than over here at the fuse so there again I made more into orientation and that way when I go to put it on I'll look and say okay this yeah. is my battery side and this is my fuse side so that way mm -hmm. when you turn it you know it's going on to the battery like this and then it turns around like that and it's going on to the fuse. That's a great tip because it's not like you can just pop these off no. and redo them it's kind of a one a one time deal. Like little teeny number four wires yeah or or even even a two watt wire you can get a little bit of a bend but this is not going to give. Number four wire is you know it's too thick and 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 too stout that you're not going to be able to get that to turn like you want to real especially well. if it's a little cheaper like this is welding cable yes. so it's a lot more pliable than than the regular type number some four, of the four aught. some of the battery cables you know you you look at how fine the hair is um, we jokingly call it hair but each one of those little wires are and if you get some battery cable um, they have a whole lot less and and the strands are thicker and they're mm. extremely hard to yeah. to get to bend so if you get those in you know even a little off yeah. then you you're starting all over again or you have it having to bend the the wire really hard to get it to fit so i guess next you're going to put on some uh shrink yep. shrink tubing yes i will okay so next uh, eddie's going to put on the shrink tubing 
and he uses a type, sort of a marine grade, I don't know if you see in the camera, but it's kind of shiny inside. So there's there's a kind of a glue in there that's activated when you when you do the shrink tubing and it really just helps seal everything pretty well watertight in there and keeps any air out of there that would cause oxidation and corrosion. So he's going to let us uh, watch him here as he uh, puts puts on a, a set of the shrink tubes. You can do it with like we're doing now a heat gun or you can also use a torch but I'll do one with a heat gun and then I'll do one on a torch and show you what okay. it's like. Yeah, good idea. Some people they, they put them way up here and then you, you're not you're defeating the purpose. So I try to get them right about there. Depends on the length, these are pre-cut. Yeah. This makes the job easier and it's a little bit cheaper to do it this way. But if I was doing a special type, I would I'd make it different. And this one I slid a bit further because it's gonna go on the battery switch. You can see where it's shrinking down, yeah. and then like you were talking about, you, I'll turn it all sideways, you see that little bit of glue coming out? And I almost believe it's another type of plastic that melts at a lower temperature. So what it does is it actually turns that plastic completely melt, and then once it all hardens, then it becomes the glue that holds it all together. Just like that. Yeah, beautiful. I'll get the torch and we'll do the other side with the torch. Okay. Okay, now the torch. The deal with the torch is you can burn them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they'll cook up really quick. So yeah. what I do is I get, my, I get my torch going, and then I adjust it down. Now I use a Mapcat torch. Um, regular propane torch is going to be um, quite a bit cooler, so it's not going to be like this one. But you have to keep your heat moving really well. And see right there, it's starting to think about burning, so I have to back off my heat. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot harder to do it with a torch and do a pretty job. I mean, you, you burn it on, say the heck with it, and off you go. But to do a real pretty job, you have to work at it longer with a torch. I use a torch up on the when I'm up on the roof doing um, my heat shrink tube on uh, the solar wires when I'm finishing up. But as you can see, I'm not worried about this one because it's going to go into a hiding, you know, where he's not going to see it. But... Um, you can see where the difference is. See where it got a little warm there? Just let me zoom in there. Yeah. Hold her steady. Oh yeah, and it just browned a bit. Yeah, browned a little bit. And I was being real careful. If you're doing, you know, 20, 30 of these all at once, you're gonna, you're gonna cook something. Yeah. So that's why this is the better way. Now I've done a whole, you know, whole RV with my torch because we didn't have the power at the time to run the yeah. um, heat gun. So it has its purpose and reasons, but you know, doing these big ones like that, that's a lot better with a heat gun. See, this is, this is what the deal is. is now I'm seeing the picture. So he also uses that uh, NOAC stuff on the connections. Yep. That keeps the connections from oxidizing and also makes the connection more conductive. Because you don't want to lose any heat in your connections. And you got a really high current draw on these batteries, so any little resistance is going to cause heat. And then you're going to have poor discharge and poor charging of your nice new batteries. Also, that stuff will get onto your, um, your threads of your bolt and your nut. Makes them super easier to yeah. you know, take them back yeah. off later on. I guess the lithium's a lot nicer than the old lead acid, which had the it would get a lot of that uh, acid out of the batteries causing corrosion. These kind of don't emit any fumes or gases at all. There you go. Nice. We'll do the same thing over here on this other side. You guys want to see any more about Eddie's installs? He has his YouTube channel. What's the What's the name of it? Mobile Homesteading. Mobile Homesteading. You know, I'll link to it again. But he has quite a few videos on there, and also on his website, he has a lot of photos from his uh, all his installs he's done over the years. Well, there you go, folks. A few little tips um, from Eddie about uh, doing battery cables and connecting up battery cables. I want to thank him a lot for taking his time out of this job 
and uh, giving us a few tips. Thanks, Eddie. You're welcome. Cheers.